morning folks and welcome back. I'm out for a paddle on the Norfolk Broads today. I've been looking forward to it all week. I've had a bit of a week of it. Um, the Land Rover clutch went um, last weekend and, uh, and I've spent all week in the evenings in the dark outside in the cold <laughs> taking the gearbox out and replacing the clutch. So um, I'm really, really glad to be out in the fresh air and on the water today. It's just what was needed. It's um, a bit of a drizzly day today, and there is forecast for heavy showers, but um, I've got wet weather gear, and I've got my GoPro with me, so um, if you notice a change in the camera and the audio, that's why. <laughs> but uh, the nice thing about it being a rainy day is that the broads will be quiet. There's a tree that's gone over here, and this is the underside of the root system and there are loads and loads of shell fragments in amongst the roots. And they're all in the water as well. Let me grab one out. Look at that. It's amazing, that one might even be alive. It's a big one, isn't it? I'm not gonna take it, but um, nice to know they're here. So I put in at Salhouse Broad, uh, just near the village of Salhouse, and um, it's quite a nice, accessible uh, little broad. There's a there's a car park. There's a bit of a walk down to the water. So if you're carrying your canoe, just bear that in mind. If you've got a trolley, it might be a, a good idea to bring a trolley, but um, it's not too bad. And the path is pretty is pretty good. Access is pretty good. So uh, Salhouse Broad is a small broad. It's popular in the summertime. If you're planning on paddling the broads, I would strongly suggest uh, avoiding peak times in the summer because they do get really busy with um, broads cruises and motorboats. Um, but not too bad this time of year. But during the summer, this is a very busy broad. Um, there's lots of mooring here, so you'll you'll find it chocker with uh, with big pleasure cruises. But um, yeah, it's a nice spot. I've just pulled over uh, under the cover of some trees because I'm gonna have to put the big camera away, I'm afraid. Um, it started to get a bit heavier, this rain, and um, I just can't risk damaging the camera. So I'm gonna switch to the GoPro and, um, and we'll, see, we'll see how that comes out. It's a new GoPro um, and I think the sound is a lot better than old my, on my old one. I, I, I just had to replace the old one. The sound is terrible. I'm, I'm sure those of you who've, who've used the old ones that that uh, you know where the camera is inside a plastic case um, obviously as soon as you put it in that case <laughs> the audio stays in there as well uh, and the audio wasn't ever brilliant on them anyway but um, my new one is, is supposed to be a lot better so um, we'll give that a whirl
according to the map, this is actually the entrance into the brawl that I want to get into. <laughs> I'll go over and see if I can find a way to maybe walk the canoe over. I think I'm gonna to have to find another way through. I'm not getting through there and it's, it looks like I can just get out and stand up, but it, I can't, it's just thick mud. I disappear up to my waist. Real bonus, I managed to find a way into Great Hoverton Broad, um, which just involves pulling the canoe out from where it is here, and uh, just over to that little bit of water you might just be able to see there. So yeah, that's great. Go and have an explore. It's a big broad, and now that we're out in the open and off the river, we're just at the mercy of the wind. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's quite blowy. I'm heading into the wind at the moment, just trying to keep the canoe pointing into the wind as best I can, because uh, otherwise the wind just snatches the bow. And it's such a light canoe, it just turns you around. You can't really fight against it. Now I'm over the other side of the broad. It's much easier paddling. I've got a bit of shelter from the wind. Oh, but that was quite hard work paddling across. But uh, as you can see behind me, it's quite, a, it's quite a large broad and it extends a lot further in the other direction as well.
So I just had a chat with a guy who's uh, fishing on the broad and um, he's told me that this broad is private. It's not his, um, he obviously has a permission to fish here and he said he didn't have any problem with me uh, coming on here in my canoe but apparently the uh, the landowner is not quite so welcoming. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna paddle back to where I to where I got in. I don't want to get myself in trouble. I, I doubt I'd get caught but you know private property is private property and um, you know you've got to respect that or you've got to be prepared to face the consequences if you get caught. I'm gonna shortly stop and have something to eat. I brought some pork belly slice which is just about one of my favorite things and uh, my firebox stove to cook it on. So yeah let's just get back across this broad and um, have something to eat. Well, this place seems as good as any to stop. This is Cell House Island, um, which is, uh, oh, it is an island. And uh, it's used often during the summer busy months as mooring for pleasure craft. So it's usually full, but uh, nobody around today, which is good. There's also uh, a bit of wood on this island as well. I've noticed sort of dead, dead trees and bushes and stuff. So I should be able to gather some twigs and stuff for the firebox and, um, We'll get some pork on the go. Oh, I haven't much luck today. Cold hands. <laughs> Gotta blame something, haven't you? Okay, let's get everything at the ready. Oh, my hands are really cold actually. I'm scraping a bit of the ferro rod off. If you scrape it quite slowly, you get little flakes and shavings of the ferrocerium off the rod. And it just boosts the, um, you know, when a spark does hit it, it just it flares and 
generally it lights a bit better. Now I've just gathered a load of wood, twigs and stuff, but it's been raining all day and it's been, it was raining all night last night. Um, and everything is soaked, so we're just gonna have to see how well it goes. Okay, so what I've got here are some belly slices, which I've just cut in half, just so they'll fit on the grill of the firebox stove a bit more easily. And then the good old spice kit here. I'm gonna have a little bit of chili seasoning. And then we're gonna stick them on. Now I know we've got a little bit of flame still, but there are also uh, some good coal coals in the bottom of there as well. There's some good heat that's built up. So we're gonna get them straight on the top there. Because I'm really hungry. And I'm gonna say this just because I know somebody will comment. <laughs> I know that the grill is supposed to sit in the slots on the top of the firebox, but I find it a real fat to get it in and out. So um, I've just chosen to rest it on the fire sticks this time. Just see how well it works, basically. I really wish I brought a tarp. <laughs> I uh, I knew this rain was forecast as well. I really should have been more prepared. But uh, yeah, I haven't got a lot of shelter here. I'm not planning on being here too long. Um, I'll get this eaten up, and then uh, I'll get back on the on the river, and then I'll warm up. But uh, yeah, it's when you stop that you start to get cold. My hands, in particular, have got really cold. I've got some uh, some mitts with me, some buffalo pile and pertex mitts which I find just to be the warmest thing um, I don't tend to get on very well with gloves you know I wear them around camp for picking hot things up and whatnot but um, I find my hands are much warmer in, in mittens so uh, I have a pair of those and they're, they're good and, they, and they, they also keep your hands warm even if they're even if they get wet because the, the pertex isn't waterproof it's, it's windproof but it's not waterproof but um, you know, your, your hands stay warm in there even though they're damp. So um, I should think I'll probably put them on when I start paddling again.
Oh, I'm going to enjoy these. Now, uh, the other thing I'm going to have with them is some hot sauce. I was very kindly sent a load of hot sauce samples from uh, PCF hot sauces in Texas. Um, and the guy that produces these grows all of the, his own chilies and makes loads of different um, batches of hot sauce. And um, they're supposed to be really, really good. Um, he sent me a, a whole range, a whole load. Um, some of them uh, <laughs> I'm a little bit scared of because of the name on them. Um, there's one here called Firewater, for example. I can almost guarantee that's gonna be pretty hot. But this one here, this one's just called Kiss of Death. I mean, that just sounds terrifying, doesn't it? I'm not sure I'm gonna try that one this time, but I've got a whole load in here to pick from. Um, I think sweet and zesty jalapeno sounds just the job for this. Now, they're only little sample bottles, um, but he does sell them. So, um, you know, if you, if you contact PCF Hot Sources, um, he's on Instagram, um, he's on Facebook. I've just got to get the little stopper off. It's like a little plastic stopper. And we'll give these a go. Ooh. I think I'll just put them on two to begin with, eh? <laughs> mm. Oh, that's really good. Definitely citrusy. Nice zinging, zinginess in there. Oh, that's nice. That's just sort of about right heat-wise for me. Just, just about right for my pain threshold. <laughs> really nice. Well, that was really good, but um, I'm starting to get quite cold. So um, I'm gonna get everything packed away and uh, get back on the water. Uh, geese. I don't know whether you saw those or not. Yeah, I'm gonna get packed away, um, get back on the water and warm up a bit. But um, I'll definitely be revisiting those hot sauces. Um, the one I had just now was really nice, really, really nice. <laughs> so uh, yeah, looking forward to trying some of the others on uh, on another camp. Right, let's get packed away. I've got lots of exciting things um, in store for this year. Very excited. Some uh, some really cool trips and camps and things planned. Andy from Kent Survival and I are going going off on a canoe trip. Uh, we're going to Sweden, and we're going to paddle on uh, a lake there, which we'd read about in a book by Dave Bliss. I'm sure some of you will have read it. It's an excellent book called Paddles and Polar Bread. And um, it's about it's about their trip 
um, on Stora Lee, which is a, a very long lake um, in sort of southwestern Sweden. There's a canoe outfitters at one end of the lake and you can hire all of your gear there. And um, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna, we're gonna fly over there and have a canoe expedition, have a canoe adventure in Sweden. So I'm really looking forward to that in May. And then towards the end of the year, um, I'm going on another sort of survival bushcraft challenge course. Um, again with Wilderness Survival Skills, who I did the 48 hour challenge with last year. Um, but this time it's a five day course called the Hunter Gatherer. And um, yeah, so it's obviously longer, um, but you also have less kit and there's much more reliance on what you can find to eat. So there's, a, there's gonna, you know, I'm gonna have to forage more for food and um, yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be really good. I'm really excited. So uh, hopefully I'll get a chance to film that. My plan is to film it um, like I did with the last one. And um, that should be, that should be really good. It's just starting to rain really heavily again. I'm going to have to put this camera away again. Back to the GoPro, sorry. So for those of you who don't know, I thought I'd fill you in a little bit on the Norfolk Broads. The Broads are a network of man-made lakes. They were dug during the medieval period um, and they were, they were dug out for peat. Um, peat was burnt as a fuel, it was used for heating. Some of the broads were, were dug out for gravel, South House Broad was one of those. Um, but yeah, they're all, they're all man-made and the broads are fed by a series of rivers which uh, run through the area, um, one of which is the Bure which we're paddling along now. Hello mate. Hello buddy. Well, I'm going to call it a day here. I've just made the most of a, a lull in the rain and put the big camera back on the tripod again. But uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to get out, get home, get dried, and uh, I'll come back and explore a bit more another day. I didn't realise that uh, Hoverton Great Broad was private. I had no idea. I thought they were all just Broads Authority. But I mean, there's loads of broads you can explore. Um, you know, I've just, <laughs> this is a tiny little corner, a tiny corner, um, sort of between uh, South House and Wroxham. Most of the people that come and explore the broads on a pleasure cruiser will hire their cruiser from, Bro from Wroxham and, uh, and set, out, set out from there. They also hire, you know, motorized and electric day boats and, and all sorts. So, um, you know, if you haven't got a canoe or access to a canoe and you want to explore the broads, there's always those options, but um, I always just think they're so much nicer by canoe. There'll be no video next week, I'm afraid, folks. It's my birthday weekend next weekend, so I'm going to be doing some stuff with my family. But um, I'll get back on the videos after then. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.